You're welcome, my wonderful celebrity nation. Good day to you all. Before you is Dr. UD Jesus, your celebrity teacher. Today, we are looking at our first lecture in Physics 102, which is electric charge. And we are looking at charges because everything we do in this Physics 102 is practically based on electric charge. So get ready. Don't let anything distract you. Tighten your seatbelt and let's do this. First, let's look at the lecture objectives. By the end of this lecture, we proposed that you will be able to learn the definition of charge, the unit of charge, how charges are produced, mathematical definition of charge, the formula of charge, and how charges can be calculated. That is what we propose. Now, from there, let's look at this. Definition of charge. We we'll say that this is a physical property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in an electric or magnetic field. Yes. We say that force is equal to mass times acceleration. But I would like you to sit down and ask yourself, if force is equal to mass times acceleration, now what gives force of attraction to negligible, to particles with negligible mass? There is something that is inside them that is causing them to attract or repel each other despite mass. And that is charge. Matter. From our basic education, we already know that matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. But that's not why we are here today. I want to bring out something from that matter. In matter, matter is made up of atoms. And atoms are made up of subatomic particles. These subatomic particles are three in number. The proton, the electron, and the neutron. The proton is positively charged. The electron is negatively charged. And the neutron is neutral. That means for us to talk about a charge, we can say that charge is a fundamental property of these subatomic particles that made up matter. Neutrality of an atom. Most times people misunderstand this. I've seen a situation in exams where you ask students, what do you understand by neutrality of an atom? And they will tell you that it means that atom has no charges. That's not the mindset. There are charges in atoms. But in atom, there are two charges of influence that can make it to deviate in electric field. And that is proton and electron. Neutron is neutral. So it has no influence in electric field, trying to push it to either positive or negative. No, neutron has no influence there. So now since it's neutral, it's already considered neutral. Then the proton, which is positively charged, is equal in number to electron, which is negatively charged. So if we have 10 protons in an atom, it means plus 10 charges. And if we have 10 electrons in the same atom, since they are equal, it means minus 10 charges. So plus 10 minus 10 is equal to zero. This means that the net charge of an atom is equal to zero. Take recognition of this. Your school might make it an examinable question. Neutrality of an atom continuing with an illustration this time. If you look at what we have on the left-hand side, the diagram there, first, let's look at the symbols placed on proton, neutron, and electron. Proton is yellow, neutron is green, electron is red. So if you look at the neutral atom, you will see that proton and electrons are equal, 6-6. Six, six. 
So plus 6 minus 6, net charge equal to 0. Now, if you look at the one at the center, negatively charged ion, we have more electrons than protons. That means it either gained the electrons. So, since there are more electrons than protons, it is more negatively charged than positive. So, we'll say that it's negatively charged. Now, the one on the right-hand side, positively charged ion. Here, if you check, you will notice that proton is more in number. And since proton is more in number, it has more positive charges than the negative charge. So, it's positively charged. Unit of charge. The unit of charge conventionally is given as columns. But I've seen a situation where in multi-choice questions, students see something like this. Which of the following rightly represents charge? And with all excitement, they jump into the question and I know it. Let me go and finish it. The answer is columns. And when you now move to your options, you realize that there is no column there. And all you're seeing is something like ampere second, ampere per second, second per ampere, and all that. Some students run into confusion, especially those who cram physics. You don't need to cram physics. And there is no need for running into confusion. Column simply means the amount of electricity that one ampere carries in one second. So, that means one column is equal to one ampere times one second. So column is ampere times second, and column is equal to ampere second. So whenever you see in an exam, and they ask you a question that's supposed to be column, and you did not see column, but you're seeing ampere second there, that is your answer. Production of charges. There are three basic ways in which bodies can be charged. But here we are talking about production, just like origination. Not having charge at all, and all of a sudden we created charge. That's what we want to talk about here. Now, when it comes to this, charges can be produced from friction. Let me give an illustration. We have two neutral bodies, a plastic rod and a cloth. Both of them are neutral. You now rub each other together such that the cloth rubs off rubs off electrons from the plastic body. Now, since electrons have been taken away from the plastic body, automatically the plastic body becomes positively charged because now it has more positive charge than electrons. While the clothes that rub off these electrons is having more electrons now than the positive charge. So, the cloth becomes negatively charged why the plastic rod becomes positively charged. Now, let's look at the mathematical approach of charge. Mathematically, I can say that charge is defined as the product of the current in a material and the time the current spent in the material. So, we can say that Charge is the product of current and time. So bringing it down to formula, we say that charge is equal to current times time. Now, representing my charge with Q, representing my current with I, and representing my time with C, we say that Q is equal to IT. That is the formula for charge. My dear, let's look at the calculation of charge. Number one here says a large lightning stroke can carry up to 12 amperes and 24 columns. Calculate the current flow time. Now, what do we do? The first thing is to place the formula for charge. Q equal to I T. That is the formula for charge. You now ask yourself, what am I looking for? I'm looking for time. That is what they asked me to find. So T is equal to charge all over current. Now, what is my charge given? The charge given to me is 24 columns. And what is the current given to me? Current is equal to 12 amperes. 
So to solve the problem, we'll have time to be equal to charge all over current, which is equal to 24, that's the charge given, divided by a current, which is 12. And this will give you 2. So, taking it from that point, we can now say that time is equal to 2 seconds. So, from the calculation there, time is equal to 2 seconds. This is how to treat your problems in charge. Now, question number two there says, there is current of two amperes in a conductor of time t. During the time t, a charge of 120 coulombs flows through the conductor. What is the value of t? Similarly, just like number one, what is the formula for charge? Give it to me. Q equal to I times T. But what are they looking for? They are looking for time. So we have it at time is equal to Q all over I. Now, try and find out what is our Q. Our Q given here is 120 columns. And the current given I is equal to 2 amperes. So my time T is equal to Q over I, which is equal to 120 over 2, which is equal to 60. Now that implies that implies that T is equal to 60 seconds. And this is the basic way to handle the calculation in charges anytime, any day. Lecture review. I want to know if you have learned the definition of charge. If you have not, you can simply say that charge is the quantity of current passing through a material and the time spent in the material. Secondly, I hope you've learned the unit of charge. Charge is measured in columns. And columns simply means ampere second. You know how charges are produced. We say that charge is produced by friction. Now, the formula of charge is given as Q equal to I times T. Where Q is the quantity of charge, I is um, current, and T is time. Now, bringing down the unit, charge is measured in columns, current is measured in amperes, and time is measured in seconds. That means the unit column is equal to ampere second. Any day, any time. This is how to work on your charge. Now, calculation of charge. I hope you are very comfortable with the ones we treated over there for you. Now, if you are very comfortable, we would like you to reach out and drop a feedback. But if there is any part you did not understand very well, I call upon you to please drop a feedback question on the comment section so that we will be able to make this physics 102 an easy one for you. Thank you for listening. Our next lecture will be on types and properties of charges. For now, have a wonderful time. Go through this lecture again and again. Have a perfect understanding of what it is. And if there is any part you did not understand very well, don't get worried. 
kindly drop a feedback question on that on our comment section so that we will be able to help you out on it. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Remain celebrities. Love you all.